Twilio once said, they have a new ally, a spy in the First Order. But can time be an ally to the sequel trilogy? We're going to talk about it right here on the Resistance broadcast. Welcome back, everybody. It is Thursday. I'm John. That's Lacey. James is in Batu. It's canon. <laughs> I honestly thought you were going to say Bulio once said, win the war. And I was like, where <laughs> is going? Bulio once said, where's James? Win the war. He's, uh, James is canon because he's, uh, in, in, on Batu In Batu He's at Galaxy's Edge. He's uh, on vacation. He'll be back on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lacey and I are here to discuss Star Wars on this Thursday episode. We are. Lacey, how you doing? Good. We're wearing matching shirts for people watching at home. A couple of buddies in matching yeah. shirts, bringing that back. Yeah, we did not coordinate that, but the Mando <laughs> fan show is here. <laughs> and, uh... And we are supporting it. James turns it. on the episode. He's like, I'm not there. And they're wearing matching shirts. And they're wearing <laughs> matching shirts. So listen, uh, you're eating Scandinavian I was. I'm not fish. right now. Swimmers. Scandinavian swimmers. Okay. Trader Joe's. Um, Trader Joe's. Okay. Those are like the knockoff Swedish fish. They're not knockoff. They're their version of Swedish fish with Sour Patch thrown together. But the name is a knockoff. I guess. I think it's because it they're not just fish, though. There's like starfish, there's seashells, there's whales. All right. So it's not just fish. Cool. All right. I got to get me some of those. Give them a shot. Maybe for Halloween. We'll see. Although, you know, Trader Joe's can be a little pricey. You're getting a little bougie with your candy there, Gillerin. I like Trader Joe's. <laughs> no, I do too. I love Trader they do have good they, no, they do have good. They stuff, have the best sure. pumpkin stuff right now. I'm a big pumpkin person. We all know this. Uh, they have a really good soup that's called their Harvest Soup, which is like pumpkin, butternut squash, and tomato. Oh, it's so good. I've bought like eight cans or jars. I don't know why I don't like pumpkin stuff. I love pumpkin stuff. Pumpkin everything. I bought that. I bought pumpkin waffles. Mm. I bought pumpkin salsa. I bought pumpkin uh, pasta sauce. You're going to turn orange. No. Not really. <laughs> I'm so pale. You thought Nothing about it for a second. Me. You're like, <laughs> you're like, wait. You start googling. Can I turn orange from eating pumpkins? I guarantee you that's the thing that comes up. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So, yeah, we have a cool discussion show in in store for you today. Later, we're going to discuss how will the sequel trilogy be viewed in ten years or more. Uh, because the prequels sure as heck got their uh redemption arc and their renaissance mm -hmm. uh so we'll see what happens with that so we're gonna kind of speculate on maybe the future for the sequel trilogy similarities between that and the prequel trilogy differences and in, in how things have been received uh, in the age of social media and all of that so it should be a cool discussion later uh and then of course your tweets in resistance transmissions but first our first segment of the day and lacy is going to guide us through it this time because james is on a reconnaissance mission oh, i thought you were going to say because i'm the best you, you tried this bit on Monday. It's not going to... It's not... No. Okay. <laughs> Gotta stay consistent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, the force. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. If you like TRB and would like to support what we do, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. You can support the pod for just $2. As a thank you, patrons of every tier will receive exclusive weekly bonus features and perks and awesome additional benefits as you move up in the ranks. Your support allows us to grow what we're doing and expand beyond what you currently see week to week. So if you are able to support us, thank you so much. I'm really proud that I read thank that. You. I usually do my own thing, but I was really proud. Thank you. Lacey, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to pretend you're not reading. Oh, I'm not reading. It just comes from the heart. It does come from the heart, but like usually I mess up when I read. I was I was just proud. Anyway, no, seriously though, it means a lot to us if you support us there because there's a lot of stuff going on later this year and into next year. So yeah. your support of the pod tells us that like you believe in what we're doing and and what we love to do, which is talk about Star Wars. So thank you so much, and that's that's genuinely coming from me. And and one thing that we. I don't know if we've forgotten about it. Like, obviously, celebration's a thing, but the other cons are going to be coming back, too. Right. Um, like, I, I didn't... I made the tough choice of not going to New York Comic Con this year, and I apologize. You know, there were some people 
who would ask me if I can grab them a certain book or something like that, or like, are you going to cover this? And I thought I was going to go, but I made the tough choice not to go just because, you know, I have little kids and, and that sort of thing. And I don't want to get too far into that in, in terms of like personal I think next year is going to be better. But and it was just a yeah. little too soon. Yeah. And, and, you know, those other cons are going to be coming back and we may be able to go to some of those as well. Mm -hmm. And like the, just people supporting us on Patreon allow us to go bring our our level of energy and what we do to those and cover those for you and make that a fun bit of uh, content for you to absorb from us. So, uh, all, you know, that's another thing I just really haven't thought about in a long time. I can't wait and, to see uh, people. your support helps us be able to do that. I don't know how you guys yeah. feel at home, but John and I were talking about this the other day. It literally feels like I've lost two years of my life. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it is weird because I'm yeah, used it to feels like 2020 didn't exist. Right. I'm used to traveling at least a couple times a year, if not to cons, to yeah. theme parks and stuff. And that just hasn't happened. And I miss being at events and covering things for Star Wars Newsnet and for the podcast and to see you guys uh, in in the environments and in, in public. Uh, and it's been a long time coming. So I'm really excited that next year uh, we'll be able to do those things which is great. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so this is part of the show, Will the Force, where we take some questions and we answer them. Uh, do you agree or do you not agree? So that's basically what it is. <laughs> all right. I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. So first up, we have a Patreon submission from Major Lonnie. Welcome back, Lonnie. I think you were a listener for a while, but you just joined Patreon, so welcome. Uh, he What's asks... Up, Will there ever will they ever bring Revan to the current story timeline? This is a hot topic, John. This comes up a lot. Do you think that? Yes, no. I do. I do think they will. I think there is an untapped area where they can tell brand new stories in the old republic that don't have anything to do with stories that were told in the expanded universe prior. Mm -hmm. um, which George Lucas, it was never part of George Lucas's canon anyway, but they can bring in a character like Revan that people like a lot and kind of redo him, reboot him, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. Kind of like what they've done with Thrawn. So this or isn't Boba something Fett, that... kind of. Well, Boba Fett was canon. I know, but I'm saying redo him in the sense of like, you had a certain percept, like a certain view of him and then they... Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But in terms of uh, a, a direct similarity, I think Thrawn's a good one. Yep. Um, it's not like a situation where they've never done this. So the fact that they have done it, it's been received well, um, and they haven't touched the Old Republic yet. Uh, I think it's something that uh, they probably have their eyes on, and they're probably waiting for the good time to do it. But I think Revan could certainly be one of maybe a handful of characters they do reboot in this new um, blank canvas they have to tell some old Republic stories. So I, I hope, it, you know, I know it's a hot button issue with a lot of fans, this character in particular, and what they may or may not do with it. Um, people like to poke each other back and forth about it for some reason. Right. And uh, I, 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 so maybe there's, there's hesitance there because of that, but I think ultimately they will. So, uh, Revan, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to agree with you. I, I think that they will bring Revan into the current story timeline. I think they're going to do it the way that you had said, John, where, you know, they're bringing back the game, obviously, and everyone's pretty hyped about that. Uh, but I don't yeah. think it's going to be the same story slash same exact situation that you guys are, that fans of Revan are knowledgeable of i think that they're gonna kind of take bits and pieces and make it its own thing um with obviously callbacks and moments that you're like oh yes this is from the the legends um i think that if they bring the exact story back it's gonna just conflict with stuff that they already have so i think that they're just gonna pull from it which is interesting because if you look at the sequel trilogy you look between Revan and Kylo Ren, they look very similar. Bastilla oh, Shan yeah. and Rey look very similar. So mm -hmm. I know early on, especially after TFA, a lot of people were pulling similarities between those two sets of characters and being like, oh, is this where it's going? And I know that a lot of people early on were kind of wondering if that romance would happen because of Revan and Bastilla Shan, um, mm -hmm. which admittedly I didn't feel after TFA. I was like, Kylo Ren sucks. <laughs> <laughs> TFA made me hate him because he killed Han Solo, but I grew to love him. 
Um, but yeah, so thank you so much, Lonnie, for your question. Next, we have Will Boba Fett and Fennec Shan's relationship become romantic? Speaking of romance, in oh, the mama. book of Boba Fett, and because I'm asking the question, John's going to go first every time. So, John. Every time? Every time. Go ahead, John. This is your moment to shine. I want you to go first on this one. Oh, gosh. I feel like this is... I wrote the question. I don't want to... Like, I'm oh, saying, oh, gosh, answer. because I've already seen conversations and stuff online and fan art and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think shipping is obviously a very uh, interesting concept for fans. I've done it. I'm not going to say that I'm above it or anything. That's not what I'm saying. I think it gets tricky because expectations get set as fans ship characters and want... Do they? I think so. I mean, Ray and Kylo were <laughs> shipped and stuff, and people wanted that to happen. I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. Oh, but, oh yeah. I thought you were being serious. Um, no, 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 no. I think that shipping is a fun, interesting way to interact with characters and to make things your own. But I think that there needs to be a disconnect between what you want and what you think should happen and what ultimately the storyteller and creators want for those characters. That being said, currently, from what I know of these characters, no, I don't think their relationship will become romantic. I think that it's very clear that it's a boss underling relationship of you saved me now i have a life debt with you i'm your henchman i'm your side wing man wing woman um i don't see them getting romantic but if it happens and it makes sense in the story i'm all for it currently right now no john hmm yeah i'm leaning towards no too because i don't know that they want to take boba fett there um, he's on a revenge tour i don't think he needs uh <laughs> i don't think he needs to you know it reminded me of uh john boyega talking at celebration when they were like or do you have romance with rose and he was like i'm in the middle of war i don't have time to think about it i feel like boba fett's yeah, got right. a, a a checklist or a book if you will of people to get back at so i just feel like that's not gonna happen yeah um i think there's this perception of boba fett and while they're giving us a lot more of him mm -hmm. that they don't want to change that much which is that he is kind of cold and he is kind of this mysterious guy if you start if we start seeing boba fett you know laying in a bed smoking a cigarette after after a long night with fennec shan then it's like is that even boba fett anymore <laughs> you know what i mean and i understand the idea of character arcs and developing characters i get all of that I do. But some characters, I think you don't need to expand in certain ways that much. And I think Boba Fett's one of them. I think you want to keep this guy that that cool bounty hunter, badass, wants to like beef that up because uh, he, you know, was kind of left to left a fool at the end of Return of the Jedi. And the whole idea of him coming back is like a redemption in many ways as a character. I call it Fet Redemption, or, and even just him getting, uh, revenge and, and, and that sort of thing. So I, I think it'd be a little strange if we start seeing Boba Fett, like making out with somebody, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I'm going to say no to we're, we're two for two. And I have a feeling we may go four for four here, which may be boring for our audience. We'll see though. We'll see Lacey. I do want to expand though on the whole relationship romantic thing. I think that this question and what we've seen as fans react to these types of relationship relationships within shows and books and whatnot is due to the fact that i think fans do want romance in star wars and so far in yeah. the new disney canon we haven't really gotten that we got it with kira and han and we got uh. hints at it with you know Jin and cassian little moments that you were like maybe maybe not maz and chewie <laughs> Ray and Kylo like you get these moments that you're like okay maybe something's gonna happen and nothing ever pans out and I think that there is something to say with a good story that there it, it is normal for humans to want to have connection and fall in love and be together so I think that that idea the whole idea of shipping within Star Wars is due to the fact that people do want that romantic story within their adventure they got it with yeah. Leia and Han they want it now. 
um, many major, the best movies we've ever seen are love stories. So I think this is a testament to that. And I hope that we do eventually get that. I just don't know if it's with these characters. And, and we, you know, we've had an animated, you know, uh, Kanan and Hera. And, sure, um, sure. And others. So, but yeah. I'm saying live action. That, but sorry. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I should have specified yeah. that. But uh, I hope to see it. I'm a big romance fan myself. We all know this. I love Hallmark. I love yeah, rom-coms. I agree. I'm it, all for it. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, when when it's done right, like, uh, I felt like Kira and Han was fantastic. They were great. I, I, yeah. I, I love it, too. I love it, too. All right. Next, we have a Patreon submission. So, again, if you Look are... this guy. <laughs> if you are part of our Patreon community at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast starting at $5 and up, our second tier, you can submit questions. So this is from General Nathan right. Shank. Nathan, welcome back. Look at this guy. Uh, hope you and the fam are well. He asks, will we see a flash forward at the end of the Kenobi series like we did at the end of the Clone Wars? John. Mm. Epilogues are tricky for me. Um, sometimes they're really cool. and Sometimes I'm like, why is Joe Manganiello at the end of Batman v Superman? Like, what is he doing? Because they were going to do something and then they didn't. <laughs> I know, but I'm still like, he looks weird. I don't like this. <laughs> um, throw him back in the ocean. <laughs> I, I always think of like Harry Potter when they made all the actors like get wrinkly and like put makeup on them and made them look yeah, like dads. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I had a theory about this that makes me have to say yes, where I feel like they may... Via having the power of amazing CGI, do a flash forward and give us a quick glimpse mm. of an Alec Guinness Obi Wan overlooking Lars Homestead or something from afar, just to give a nod to Alec Guinness, remind the audience this is that guy who bec- he becomes that. So we're gonna say goodbye to Ewan, and then they're gonna flash forward ten years and show an Alec Guinness briefly, Interesting. just overlooking like Luke or something like that. Uh, I think that'd be beautiful. I think that'd be amazing. If they want to toss one line in there, get Stephen Stanton to do it because he does it absolutely flawlessly. That'd be amazing <laughs> too. Uh, but because of that, Nathan, uh, great question. I think we will get a small little epilogue in that fashion. So you think they're going to rogue one it and go right into the next thing? Um, They may leave a little buffer room. I think it's more of just uh, like a symbolism thing and, and a nod to Alec Guinness and, and just letting everyone know that uh, the character is finally rounding out to how we first met him. Interesting. I'm probably wrong, Nathan. <laughs> I don't think they will. I think they're going to leave it as is. I don't think they need it. I think it's kind of everybody knows Alec Guinness is Obi-Wan. I think everybody knows what to expect when you meet him in A New Hope. I don't think they need to lead into it. I think it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to say no. Yeah, but wouldn't you wouldn't you cry a little if they did that? I'm not saying bit? I wouldn't like it. I'm just saying I don't think they will because they don't need to. I don't think it adds anything to the story gonna, to have that. Are you going to call me immediately when that happens, that exact thing happens? <sighs> I'm not going to call you, but I feel like you're going to text <laughs> me being like, guess who was right? Because that always happens. Oh, no. <laughs> No, I never done. I don't do that. Let's know. You did it with no. Avengers. You did it with Rise of Skywalker. No, I didn't go say I was right. I with didn't go Peggy boasting thing. about it. We talked I, about I, it. Did I go boasting it. about it? You did. You said, guess, guess what I did. And you sent me the tweet that you sent a year prior saying, oh. <laughs> yes, you absolutely <laughs> did. And then I must have been. Yeah. And then at Rise of Skywalker yeah. premiere, when she said, I'm Ray Skywalker, you, your head turned so quick. And you stared at me, and I just went, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, I also I really had to go to the bathroom at that point. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I just remember you looking at me, and I was like, I, I, I'm pretty sure I said, and, shut and up. The, the funny thing about the premieres, which I didn't realize when I went to The Last Jedi one, is it's... um. The, the, what they do out of respect is they leave all the lights off until all the credits run. So we're sitting there as, you know, and, and the Star should. Wars credits you are long. You should sit through the credits, yeah. I, I agree. But I was like, you know, I had a, I don't know what I had to drink before, but I was like, oh, God, like, you know, I, and I didn't want to get up during the movie, of course. So I was and like, the last like, 45 minutes of the yeah, movie. Yeah, it's a fast paced movie, too. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was, that was, that was funny. That was funny. You definitely looked at me and you were like, I'm right again. 
Well, anyway, okay. uh, last question we have. Will Natalie Portman have a surprise appearance in new footage not archived in the Obi-Wan Kenobi oh. series? Interesting. Hmm. So I'm assuming this might be like playing into the whole comic book stuff. Is that what you were thinking when you came up with this question? Y- yeah, or just the, the idea that because Hayden's coming back. Mm-hmm. He looks great, by the way. He does. He does. He looks happy. He looks he looks like he doesn't look like a guy who feels like he's forced to be back involved here. No, he looks like he's no. enjoying it, um, which is very cool. But yeah, I think it came from the idea because Hayden's back and we need to see a substantial amount of him without the mask. And to me, this, that involves maybe flashbacks and, you know, that whole thing. OK, so I'm going to let you answer first. Man, this is so tough because I don't think Natalie Portman wants to revisit Star Wars as much as she had fun doing that skit on SNL. Um, I can't. Yeah, but that was the kind of mocking her... it. It was kind of poking fun at it. I know. Yeah, right. And but I like I can't ever see her walking on a stage at Celebration or anything like that. I feel like she's so far removed in her career. Um, I I think it'd be pretty cool if they did it, but I'm gonna say no. I'm going to say no because they just wrapped and she's been shooting uh, Thor, uh, Love and Thunder. They've been shooting that movie this whole mm-hmm. time. So there's no way she left. Where? In New Zealand. Australia? To go, yeah, Australia oh, yeah. to come back to shoot this in LA. I don't see that happening. If they do, when, I will eat those words. Yeah. When, when, do you know when the dates of Thor were? I think they're still shooting it. I don't know. They might have just finished. Yeah, but was it? Because Kenobi started filming in April. Well, I think they were still shooting during that time because we saw pictures from oh, okay. Taika Waititi with uh, him and. Is she Kimberly. is she having like a big role in this one, or is it one of those cameo things? She's playing Lady Thor. Lady Thor. Lady Thor. I am. Yeah. What is that? That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> that's a whole nother. I can't keep up. Yeah. Man, Marvel. So that's why I'm saying no. I just think the timelines between no, what good, she's yeah. shooting for that and what she's shooting for this wouldn't make sense. Now, could she get on a plane for a couple of days and, and fly over? Sure. But there's still the whole COVID thing that was going on and she'd have to be in quarantine and all this other stuff. I just, I, I agree with you, John. I don't think she's interested in being a part of Star Wars. I think she's respected that period of her life. She's willing to celebrate it on Instagram and talk to, you know, uh, I'm at best and stuff and like say like, oh, we had such a great time, but I don't think she's eager to get jump back in. It it seems like even Ewan McGregor, when he talks about the prequels, he's still you can tell he still doesn't love them. There there's and an undertone of it could have been better. Yeah, like, oh well, this is this is this is so much different than when, when I made the last ones and he's like so excited for now, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like when when a when a band puts out a new record, they're like, no, the, the, uh, don't wor- forget about our last record. This new one is the one. Like right, that's right. you know that's it. And I think she's sort of the same way. When people ask her about Star Wars, she's polite, but it's not one of those like, you know, looking back, like those were really good. She never says anything like that. I don't at think all. her character had it's a good just... arc. I don't think she had a good experience from you know rumors and behind the scenes information that has come yeah, out over the years that yeah. as the series went on, she didn't have good experience. So I don't know if right. she'd be willing to jump back in, but maybe she would cause she has kids and stuff. So yeah. Anyway, that's it for will of the force. We're now going to go into our discussion, John. Okay. Discussion time. And this week we're going to talk, we talked a little bit about the prequels there and their Renaissance, but now, how will the sequel trilogy be viewed in 10 years or more? Obi-Wan once thought as you do. So the Star Wars prequels uh, went through their renaissance, redemption, if you will, uh, as kids who were five watching The Phantom Menace on the big screen in 1999 are now in their mid-20s. Mm-hmm. And some of the loudest and prominent voices on social media helping shine a brighter light on a trilogy that was slammed by audiences and critics when they came out so let's look at the sequel trilogy Mm -hmm. will it too go through a similar redemption in 10 years by 2030 will 15 will will be 15 years removed from when the force awakens came out so will the five-year-olds then have a similar impact 
as the prequel kids do today. So let's kind of talk about that. Um, there's definitely different angles we can play into this year, but will time be an ally to the sequel trilogy or is it doomed to be a divisive mark among varying opinions of fans for eternity? So I'll start just by saying, I think it will be viewed better as time passes just because wounds heal uh, for one thing, people grow up and and do other you know things with their lives that maybe they're like you know what I I don't know why I cared so much about that you know I, I why did I hate it? who cares I got you know I'm I got bills I got kids you know all that and then I agree uh, you know with the what happened with the prequels and that you know kids who were five are now the podcasters who were saying we love the prequel trilogy and it's definitely taken on a new light where it's um, appreciated a lot more now and you see a lot of the actors talking about it. Ahmed Best obviously was a, it's a big one. Um, How many people for, are lining up biggest. to see Hayden? Yeah. Yeah, Hayden Christensen coming back, literally coming back to Star Wars. Ewan McGregor back. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it is really taken on a second life in a good way. And it's good to see that uh, George Lucas is is probably enjoying seeing that too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of saying like, see, I told you, like you guys, you just trusted me a little bit. Uh, these are made for kids and now they grew up and now they're going to show their kids. And I get that. Mm-hmm. I do get that. Are they my favorite movies? No, but I do appreciate them. Uh, I do enjoy them. Um, so sequel trilogy, I think is going to go through a similar thing. The only difference, Lacey, I think, is because these movies came out with social media being such a big thing, it's going to be harder for it right? because people really dug their feet into the sand and made their hardline choices about this and like fought with people about it. And probably like a lot of people, like we even know friends who... uh you know, maybe used to podcast more about Star Wars who got burnt out and was like, I can't, I don't want to do this anymore right, and stuff. Right. And, you know, I get all that. So I think there is a similarity in that it will age a lot better. And, you know, kids who are five watching Ray, that's, she's their hero. And like, as time goes on and people watch this trilogy for the first time, they're not going to think, oh, they didn't know what they were doing and they just passed it on and they made it up. They're going to be like, no, this was the story. Okay, that's cool. That's the story. So I think all of those elements are going to play into it aging well. The only thing that I think might be a little challenge is, like I said, about uh, that it coming out in social media and dealing with the the firestorm that has um, that still rips the bandaid off anytime someone brings up the Last Jedi or or or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So what what so what do you think? What's your overall take? Your, like your general thought? Will it? And then what fa- what factors do you think play in? And do you agree or disagree with uh, some of the points I made? I, I think overall, I agree with you. I think over time, these will be viewed much more favorably, or at least certain aspects will be viewed favorably, favorably based on people have their favorites and not favorites of the series and, and things that they like and don't like. I think, like you said, a big part that played into this is social media and is that we were in it in the sense of uh from the beginning to the end of the sequel trilogy like we were in it for all the Mm -hmm. rumors and the casting and the behind the scenes stuff and things that went wrong and things that went right uh we were all a part of that and sides were kind of picked and, and lines were drawn with people that it affects how they react to things. You know, I, I think that there are a lot of people that liked the sequel trilogy overall. I think we fall into that category of people that overall were like, it was great. I had a blast. It's such a fun time. I'm going to look back on it favorably. It was it was great. But I think there are people that have different experiences with it. And that's going to affect how it appears to them later. Because they're now not just drawing on whether they thought the movie was good or not, they're drawing on those experiences of interacting with people online, interacting with yeah. people at conventions, uh, just like behind the scenes rumors and fan fiction and all these other expectations that people had that I don't think people had for the prequels. I think people had a pre um, expectations in the sense of they thought it was going to be awesome because it's Star Wars. But I think people knew where that story was going. Whereas this one, they didn't. Yeah. So they were kind of just like, oh, I think it should go this way. And I'm going to write 60 fan fiction stories about where it should go. So when it didn't go that way, people got disappointed. 
because it's that fan expectation yeah. versus fan entitlement versus what actually happened. So it's tricky. Now, that being said, I 100% agree with you, John, when you said that people that grew up with this are going to look back on it and be like, this is my trilogy. This is how I got into Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I think with the exception of probably uh, our kids, because we'll probably show them the, the originals first, it's just the way <laughs> it happens. Um, yeah. But I think people outside of Star Wars like Star Wars fans, just like normal people that are like, yeah, Star Wars is cool. I think a lot of them will start with the newer movies and not the older ones. Only because yeah. that's what's relevant now with the theme parks and the merchandise and everything that's going on. That's what people are showing their kids. So you have kids that love Rey and Kylo and BB-8. And if you see them around, whether it be at the store or at a theme park or whatever, they love these movies. And they don't have the same opinions that us as adults have of storytelling and oh this deeper meaning theme didn't happen they just say hey i like bb8 bb8's cool he rolls around he does right. this thing i yeah. like bb8 um now does that mean like later in life when they start their own podcasts and take over and we're we're old and like out of here uh that they won't have more you know in-depth discussions and, and conversations and, and and opinions of course but I think right now they're going to go back just like the prequel people have and say, I loved these movies and this is why. And that's what they're going to focus yeah. on. And they're not going to focus on the negative stuff because they didn't grow up in it of the drama and everything else. Um, and yeah, I personally I, I, can't wait for my daughter to see these movies because I think she's going to love them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't wait to. I feel like Johnny's too young so far gonna Me wait a little too. while for him to be able to sit down and watch too young <laughs> <laughs> too young um but yeah it's just it's it's also just that there's always that feeling that you can't replicate which is the first one and it's like a five-year-old who saw the force awakens is now like they'll remember that and they'll never forget what they felt like experiencing it just like on monday when we when jetta did her pod race and right. was talking about how she remembers being a little kid watching the first star wars movie though that's going to be kids in in maybe 10, i should start with the force awakens with my daughter maybe i should start there <laughs> well it depends on what you want to spoil too you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. so i i'm going to try my hardest to to see if johnny doesn't make the connection what's the, the order thing? you're going to do it's... for johnny side note oof Oh man, I don't know. Definitely four, five, six, and then we'll see from there. I, <laughs> oof. Uh, yeah, good question. But I, I think there's something about those kids that are going to be 20 years old, uh, you know, starting podcasts or 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 whatever they're going to do as Star Wars fans. If they're Star Wars fans at that age, that means they're going to be big time Star Wars fans because they're going to have loved it for that long, right? And they're going to really cherish that memory of going to see the force awakens as a very little kid and that's that memory is going to be one of those eight memories you have in your life that you remember like it was yesterday and that's gonna be one of them for them right you're telling and me those little a... girls that interviewed daisy ridley on the red carpet oh, with ray buns are yeah. never gonna like star wars again no they're gonna this is the time yeah. of their, that is their number one thing it will be their number one thing till they are old right it, yeah and, and and that's that's the thing that's the power of that like no one could take that away from them it it it's one of those things that is going to be they're going to be lying at the end of their life on their deathbed like remembering that moment and it's just those, those types of special Ridley moments on the red carpet yeah yes yes and it's like those are the kids who are going to be teenagers and kathleen kennedy and all of them must be aware of that no like knowing like Man, when we bring Ray back, it's going to be probably a pretty big deal for the next generation. And that's who we want to keep around. Uh, and that's not saying like, oh, forget all, you know the original trilogy people. We want you too. We want all the generations of fans to come enjoy Star Wars. But I think that's, that's going to be a big deal. And I think when they bring those characters back around, all those feelings will come back. And usually, more often than not, when you remove yourself from something for a long period of time, like you run, say you run into like an ex after like 10 or 15 years bar barring it was some really horrible breakup you you have polite conversation or something and maybe you remember like the good things i you don't, don't really I focus run the on other the way. bad things i'm so awkward I, if i see a, someone i saw in, like fair enough someone not even someone i dated just like a neighbor or someone's mom from high school i am out <laughs> fair enough yeah. fair enough but 
<laughs> I think I think for a lot of people in a lot of situations, and maybe the the relationship one is not the best one. But oh, I was just sometimes... joking. It. I think it's yeah. a great example. So I... I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah and and that's fine that that might be the case for a lot of people but it's i i feel like they say you know absence makes the heart grow fonder and i think that's a real thing sure and i think people often like to remember good things that happen versus the bad also the production stuff you know uh oh they you know got rid of colin trevorrow and ryan was supposed to do this J- and blah, blah blah jj didn't jj didn't write an outline for episode eight and ryan did it clean and then jj had to twist it and do this right. and uh, Michael Arndt was, you know, uh, jettisoned from TFA. They had to bring in Larry Kasdan, uh, all this stuff. And, mm-hmm. and no one's going to talk about that. Right. Like they're, they're going to make they're going to make the, you know, the making of books uh, that won't be as good as the ones that J.W. Rinsler did. Rest in peace. Yeah, we miss you, bud. Um, uh, but ultimately, fans who are watching those movies like like even it's happening with Solo right now. People are forgetting about all that drama that happened. They're like, you know what? This is a good movie. And I think that's going to happen tenfold as more time passes for the sequel trilogy, where you're just going to see the movies and the story for what it is. Whether you like it or not is one thing, uh, but like that that whole the production drama and all that stuff, that stuff goes away. But like no one talks about like we were talking about Jaws on on Monday. Nobody talks about what an absolute disaster that production was. They How just about see an, an absolute disaster movie. most movie productions are? Like name yeah, but the, like one Jaws, like the shark was sinking to the right. bottom of the ocean, like they couldn't get it to work, <laughs> and all this stuff. It was absolutely nuts. Steven Spielberg's like this young director trying to figure it out. Yeah, and now people are just like, oh, you mean one of the top ten movies of or all time? Back yeah, to Jaws? the Future okay, ran out of money. They had one day to shoot the whole end scene, and they had no budget to do it. Like, it or was... yeah, they filmed they filmed like half the movie with Eric Stoltz yeah, and first, the whole and thing. then got yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that that happens in movies. And uh, so I think that's something that you could eliminate so we can forget about the production stuff. But but also just accepting, um, I, I think the choices about the characters, the legacy characters, Han, Luke, and Leia, uh, this might be a hot take. I don't know. I hate saying, I even hate saying the phrase hot take. I'm so so do I. I feel it, like it's like we're past that point. I feel like it's played its yeah. role for the past few years and like hot takes, we can and move pe- on. We can move on. From and people that. say people say hot take when it's not even a hot take. Like if you're gonna say hot take, stoke the fire. Let's let's, let's get a little nutty. Yeah. Like say give a real hot take. Or but, when people say in my opinion, you don't need to say that. You're already giving your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But I think if they had gone the fan service way mm-hmm. and had Luke be the White Knight and had yep. Han survive and holding Leia's hand at the end of Episode Nine and them be the main three again. It would have been probably a lot of people have been like, oh, this is great. This is great. But it wouldn't have aged well. I think it would have been like, man, looking back on that, like they just kind of did it just to do it. I think and it could have aged well where Han survived. I don't think people need to die for it to not age well. But I agree with you about May- the White Knight stuff. Yeah, may- yeah, maybe. But it's like if, if, if we see the end of episode nine and they're all taking the family photo again and there's Han, Luke and Leia again. And they're the heroes again, and they came to save the new generation. I feel like people would look back and be like, they didn't take any risk. Why'd they tell that story then? Like, it, it's almost like whatever. Oh, Whereas yeah, in this no, one, they... I know what you're saying. I'm saying, like, I don't think yeah. people had to die. I'm, I'm no, very against that, characters dying, guys. <laughs> you I haven't know, gotten that I know. already. <laughs> but I know, but but I think it's, it, it's, I, it's so weird for me to say this, but I feel, feel like it respects the characters more because. You know, death is a part of life. Sure. And it happens and it's never like a glorious thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's tough. Like like when Akbar died, he died, his ship got blown up. You know what? That happens. People die in car accidents. Not everyone has this glorious, awesome death. I hated that. And I'm I'm not trying to get I'm not I know, but I'm not trying to get morbid about it, but like that sometimes those things happen. And in Star Wars, like all these characters had a meaningful death in one way or another. Han uh, it took his son to the dark side, sure. and later he had to get pulled back. And who pulled him back? Leia. And her the, her last act was reaching out to him and connecting with him. Mm-hmm. And then he uses Han's memory to finish the deal. Mm-hmm. I think that's amazing. And Luke's arc too, showing that even your heroes can f up and mess up, and it's okay to. And like someone had said this online, I w- I, I wish I remembered who said it. But they said seeing Luke Skywalker say I was wrong is a really important thing. 
Um, if you're listening or watching and you said it, let me know and I'll give you a shout out in the next episode. But someone had said that in passing. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree with that. Hearing Luke Skywalker say, I was wrong, is a big deal because we all mess up in life. If Luke was just this perfect character after Return of the Jedi, uh, I, I, I don't know that that has as big of an impact on people who, like, we all screw up. We all sin. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. And seeing your hero do that and recognizing it and still righting the wrongs is a big deal. So I think they made good choices instead of it being a victory lap for these characters. Like, remember me? I'm Han Solo. I'm going to shoot this guy. And I'm Luke Skywalker. Here's my green lightsaber. I'm going to beat up these guys and Leia, do or Leia things. They made tough choices for these characters, seeing them later in their life. And I think in time that will be looked on with more respect as we move forward. You know what I mean? Instead of like some sort of like Disney parade victory lap of the characters. No, I agree with you. I think that I'm one of those people that definitely expected one thing going into the sequel trilogy. And one of the things I was most excited about was to see these characters back again because they played such an important role in my childhood and who I am and everything like that. So to see them come back and and especially like Han's death to kick it off with that, you're like, oh my God, like where is this going? And then to meet Luke the way he is in the second movie, you're just like, what? But like sometimes, like you said, John, it's necessary to move the story forward. I think the sequel trilogy definitely wasn't their stories. And and I've come to terms with that. And I've understood that. It's just tough. You know, you don't you want to bring back the people that, you know, and, and that feel kind of like homey to you like you're like oh i know that this person is like this and this person's like this so when you see them 30 years later and they're not what you expect and they're not doing well and everything isn't great you kind of have this like depressing feeling set in set in that you're like what this is exactly not what i expected but that's the point so yeah i think i totally agree with you i think that over time things are going to get better in the sense of The people like myself that have certain things that they don't like about the sequel trilogy, I think will come to terms with those things and just focus on things that they do like. Um, And I think that just like we said earlier, the kids that grew up with these are not going to focus on those things or make excuses for why those things don't work. Not 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 excuse, yeah. excuses, but like they won't focus on those things. Just like with the prequels, like you don't see people being like, oh, this movie sucks if they grew up with it. They're like, I loved this movie and here's why. And I think that's going to be the yeah. same for the sequel trilogy. Um, it's just, it's tough. It's tough when you're focusing and working on a project that has changed so many people's lives that not everyone is going to be happy. Not every decision they make is going to be the one that you want. And I think that that's yeah. what's been so challenging about the sequel trilogy is that no matter what decisions that were made, not every single person was going to be on board. And I think that that's what they handled the best way that they could. And the choices that they made were risky, you know, especially Ryan Johnson. A lot of the stuff he did was risky, but that was mm-hmm. his choice to make. And Lucasfilm stood by him. So that's what the story is. And you just kind of have to take it at that at that level like okay yeah this is what the decision that was made i'm interested to see eventually when i see the new ghostbusters movie how they handle it because i think that's a very similar situation i would love to compare these two uh franchises of how they rave reviews i know and 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 the thing that was told to me by someone that saw it was that it handles the old and the new better than tfa is what someone told me oh wow so you guys know I love TFA. It's my favorite of the sequel trilogy. I think it's perfect in every way. So to hear that, I'm really interested to see what they mm-hmm. did and how they handled it. Um, and I think that eventually that will be a very interesting discussion amongst the three of us when James is back, once we all see the movie, that comparing those two will be interesting because I think that they're yeah. both very similar with their fandoms, with the passion that's behind it with how people feel about it and where the story goes uh fan service versus nostalgia versus telling something new yeah that's uh, yeah that's true i am a little nervous about the ghostbusters just because it's so hyped now like everyone's like it's amazing so i'm I'm going in with high expectations so i'm i gotta try to temper those a little bit i'm just curious how they handle it 
the tone of it but since Reitman's son is doing it and Reitman's still involved I feel like they they probably did their best to still capture because it never it's never taken like Ghostbusters never took itself seriously so as long as they didn't make it some sort of really deep guttural emotional thing like I don't need to see Field of Dreams in 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 Ghostbusters <laughs> so if you want to get a little heartfelt cool but I hope they don't go too far because the, the the charm about Ghostbusters was that it didn't take itself that seriously. I just think it's going to be interesting um, to compare Star Wars versus Jurassic Park versus Ghostbusters, oh, yeah, yeah. where you have these franchises that did reboots, did remakes, while paying homage to the old and referencing old yeah. Easter eggs. Who did it best? Was it Star Wars or was it someone else? Because... I'm going to be honest, it wasn't Jurassic Park. So <laughs> right now it's just Star Wars it was has done not it best. Jurassic Park. But then you look at Ghostbusters and everybody's saying this, but then everybody didn't like, from my understanding, I didn't see it, everyone didn't like the 2016 film. So no. I kind of draw that similarity to The Last Jedi, not that I didn't like The Last Jedi, but just because it had such an interesting reaction amongst fans that you either had people that loved it or hated it. There wasn't yeah. really anybody in the middle from what I've talked to. Yeah. I, I Yeah. I mean, and, and you know what? In terms of that, like liking things, not liking things, there, I mean, there's still going to be people that don't like The Last Jedi or don't like The Rise of Skywalker sure. or even don't like TFA. How dare um, you if I you think, don't? Someone said they didn't the other day on Twitter and I got offended. <laughs> I think yeah, I think even some old school Lucasfilm people who don't work there anymore are like, yeah, I I watched the first one and I was I was like, well, yeah, didn't Marshall Lucas you know say what? that? I know JW did. Oh, JW <laughs> did. Marshall Lucas didn't like the Last Jedi. That's what it was, right? Or was it JJ? I don't know that she liked any of them. Oh, uh, maybe that's what but, it was like. They said that they didn't do well, and and that's the thing. And you know, someone had commented on our YouTube channel a few weeks ago, like, I "Can't believe you guys haven't talked about the Marshall Lucas thing." It's like there's nothing to talk about. It, I, I tweeted about it. It's she has an opinion. She's allowed to have an opinion. Who cares? Everybody has opinions, and that's the thing that's crazy to me. Is like as soon as something <laughs> this woman won an Oscar for editing Star Wars, like she can say whatever she wants. <laughs> well, that's the interesting <laughs> that kind of plays the interesting thing that kind of plays into this whole discussion of the sequel trilogy in general, uh, and how it will be viewed and how it is viewed currently, is that a lot of this is opinion based, and I feel like a lot of times people use certain opinions as confirmation that what they think is, or validation. Cor yeah, is yeah. correct and i don't yeah. think that you can look at any movie and because movies in general are meant to be taken yeah, by the person's own experiences and the person's own viewpoints and you're gonna see something in movies and projects that the director didn't even consider because he's like i didn't even think of that when i made this movie or wrote this movie it's all a personal experience and that's why we connect so much with movies and characters because it it's yeah. pulling from what you personally know and have experienced in your life it, so it's hard yeah, it's people saying like marsha lucas is on my side you right know, we, she's on our team you there's know there's no team she's like who are you <laughs> no yeah. who she's like who are you i'm 76 and someone asked me what i think about a new movie that was it yeah uh yeah. and it was it was the i think it was for jw rinsler's book and he was talking about yes uh howard kazanjan and his you know producing and she wrote the forward for it or whatever yeah. and he, he probably asked her uh he, he's probably like you know i i haven't seen all of them have you seen the new star wars and it's probably a, a brief passing comment about it and she's had opinions about the prequels for years like this is nothing new people like people are like i can't believe you guys didn't talk about this it's like look go look back 20 years ago see what marsh lucas said about the prequel she didn't like them she thought they were edited poorly and and, all and this everybody stuff. has opinions about and it how many how many times a week do we get opinions about marvel movies from directors saying how bad they are the, like it's like every other they, day <laughs> yeah, yeah george lucas doesn't like the new trilogy either newsflash so it's like whatever OK, like it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So people have their opinions. And, and to, to my next point, then about back back to the central point of the discussion sure. in, in 2035, people who don't like TLJ in 2017, oh gosh, 2035. Listen, oh they probably won't. 14 yeah, years your kid's going to be your kid's going to be 14. Oh, my God. She's uh, going to hate me at that point. <laughs> well that's how it goes that's how it goes we're gonna but be in the hate period <laughs> she might still like star wars though but i guess my, my point is people who don't like tlj in 2017 you know what they might not like it in 2035 i still don't love the uh, attack of the clones all that much do I? I, I don't like the clone wars movie and that movie's 
13 years old. Sure. It, that's okay. That's okay. I, I think what I mean is in general, there's going to be less just hatred for people are going to be like people are already getting tired of it like it, it's just going to be what it is and if people are like you know what i want to watch a star wars movie they're not going to put on a sequel trilogy movie and guess what nobody cares and nobody's gonna That's fine like judge you either way what you put on it's your house it's yeah. your dvd slash on-demand player like there we're all i mean there's a there's so many star wars fans in the world that there's an entire week-long convention dedicated to it <laughs> which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But what comes with that is people of all different shapes and sizes when it comes to opinions and preferences. And wouldn't it be really boring if we all felt the exact same way about everything? And liked the same and we were things. All... Exactly. I love going to Celebration and, and having real human conversations with people about things that, oh, I didn't like the special edition when they brought back, uh, when they uh, replaced Palpatine with uh, the ian mcdormand i'd be like oh well i did and he, it's okay to have those discussions but i think with the sequel trilogy it's now like everyone takes their stance and it's it's hold mm -hmm. hold the line we <laughs> must hold and doing this tug of war thing whereas people are going to get over that stuff you can't harbor that stuff forever about movies so i think even looking at the three of us i i pretty sure we've decided before looking at the sequel trilogy which ones are our favorites james would say last jedi you would say rise of skywalker right and then i would say tfa uh or are you i more think TFA? so rise of sky i think rise of skywalker hit me the most emotionally yeah um and i think it was john williams best movie yeah which is important for me um but it's close between that and tfa T tlj is the last but i still love it it's just i think f the f how fans treated it have distanced me from it a bit, sure. but I'll, I'm going to come back to it. And I think that's, a, that's again, a part of this, um, as, uh, you know, as we move past all of this and the bubble of social media is maybe less important people's lives in 10 years or 15 years, wherever life takes them, it becomes that personal experience again, where you're at home and you're on Disney plus, or you have your Blu-rays or whatever it is. And you're like, you know what? I want to watch the rise of Skywalker today. Right. And you're going to put it on right. and you're going to watch it and, and you're going to enjoy it. And, and that's it. And there, there's going to be just less chaos surrounding these movies in just in general by the natural progression of how things go. And I think that will naturally help it age well. And then also, like we said about the kids growing up and them being the, the future podcasters and the future blog writers. And they're going to be like, no, these movies are great. And then you're also, Lacey, going to have those trade writers who have probably already started their drafts. They're going to, and the headline's going to be like, you know what? Uh, or, or why The Rise of Skywalker actually is a good movie. We've you know, seen a lot they, of you know, solo and, ones like that. Yeah, or like The Phantom Menace. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, that's just how it's going to go in all these different pockets of life and, and stuff. So, and, and like we said, it doesn't mean everyone's going to like the movies, but it's just, there's going to be less like, I need to explain why I don't like them. And long like, threads people... and stuff. Yeah, well, the point I was making is yeah. that, like, even amongst the three of us, we have things we like and don't like. And that's what I'm assuming yes. the people listening yeah. like to listen to, is that we all have different opinions. Like, I really right. wanted Ray and Kylo to get together, and I wanted Ben Solo to live, but you guys didn't want that. But that's what makes this fandom interesting, because if you don't have people with differing opinions and experiences and understandings then you don't have any empathy amongst each yeah. other and that's like James when you loves the books right he does i don't love the books neither do i i'm not a big book person. i love the documentaries i don't think james likes the documentaries very much right you like documentaries you like the the i'm not big on the, the animation james and... loves the animation it, it's just that's how it is i like it i don't love it yes but right. you know what also so. being that i don't like those things it's interesting to hear other people talk about it i love listening to james talk about the animation in the books because he loves it so right. much and right. it gives me a viewpoint that i wouldn't have because i'm closed off from those things so i feel like right. oftentimes and in going into the sequel trilogy people need to have those conversations if you don't like something sit down with someone that loves it and just talk about it because you're gonna be amazed with how many things you actually have in common with that person, which I feel like often sure. gets lost because when you don't like the rise of Skywalker, I'm going to use that as an example. 
and you have all these reasons why you don't like it, and then you sit down with someone that does love it, you might actually discover, hey, there actually is stuff that is pretty good about that movie, and here's why. So I guess that's what I take away from this whole discussion is like, take some time to talk to someone that actually likes that thing and it might change your mind. Yeah, and I agree. And everyone has their own personal journey in their life and how they uh, relate to these movies with their own life story. Like, And it doesn't make you you wrong. That's the thing that kind of irks me the most, I think, over the past few years with all of these movies is that. When you don't like something, it doesn't mean you're wrong. And if you like it, it doesn't mean you're wrong. None of this right. makes anything wrong to a person's, view, a person's viewpoint. And I find that a lot of time online, we see like, oh, if you didn't like this or you didn't get it or understand it, then you're wrong. And that's not the case because, like I said before, these movies are very personal experiences. And that doesn't make it wrong that someone didn't connect with it the way that you did. Well, it's like saying like, oh, I don't, I don't like uh, avocado. And someone's being like, no, you're wrong. You like avocado. <laughs> right? You're like, Be like no, no. I d- I, I'm like, telling John you, I don't. John doesn't like bacon. <laughs> like, I think that's so weird, but he's not right, wrong, right. but he doesn't like bacon. <laughs> right. right. Or it's like on the reverse side, I'm like, I like soft, soft serve ice cream better than uh, um, hard ice cream. And someone would be like, no, 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 you don't. I don't like seafood. No. You love lobster. I mean, that's exactly what that is, yeah, though. Like, yeah. that's like, imagine someone having the nerve to say that to you. It's just so funny. But anyway. That would be um, weird. Imagine it, you go to a restaurant like, and you're like, oh, I actually don't like that. And they're like, no, you're wrong. And here's why. Here's, oh, I lo- here's a 12 tweet thread I always on why, do that. You're, why you're, long, you're wrong. I oh, Every once in a while, I'll tweet out like a, like, I take what happens on Twitter and be like, this is how this would play out if this was really happening in like a restaurant. <laughs> Could you and it's imagine? just like, and if you think the. If you think about how insane it is, it's it, it, it's wild what's going on in social media sometimes. So, Lacey, why but, are you getting the steak? Like, Lacey, what are you getting? I'm getting the steak. You, you're disgusting. How dare you not right. like... What? Right, I just like right. steak. <laughs> right. But to my, to my point, like, people saying like, oh, I, I, I hate, you know, Ray Skywalker and that she took the name. She shouldn't have done that. She should have been, you know, Ray from nowhere and, and, and all that stuff. But then you hear someone who's like... I I was adopted and maybe I am not blood tied to my parents, but they're just as much my parents as your parents are yours. And how can you look at someone and say like, no, you're wrong. You can't, you can't like that because of that. Right. So people need to understand that. Yes, these are movies. Yes, these are fantastical, weird stories, but f- not everyone. Some people just like watching them and popping some popcorn in their mouth and going about their business. But for some people, they they connect with these, to these characters and it helps them uh, cope with their lives or or make themselves better and, and have positive impacts in their lives or they're able to relate to a fictional hero or something like that. And why would you want to take that away from somebody? So I think as people move on and realize the world is not going to stop spinning uh, because these movies exist, uh, I, I think it's... I, I just... I'd like to be an optimist in that way. I think just all the factors we talked about here, Lacey, is going to go in a blender, spin around, and then when we take the lid off, we're going to look at it and we'll be like, yep, I think this is going to be all right. And in 15 years, 10 years, however long it takes, I think that's that's what's going to happen to the sequel trilogy, similar to how it did with the prequels, but a little different just because of that hill, like we said, we had to climb. Uh, in terms of social media so mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes um but uh i think that's about it so mm-hmm. um we're, we're up up close to an hour here but we're not done yet right Lacey? so yep. we have one more segment to go we do guys it is time for resistance transmissions <laughs> so the way that this works is john puts up a wacky crazy situation on twitter and you guys give your answers. And I don't know what the scenario is. I don't know what you said. Um, and we go through this together and <laughs> see what happens. All right. So the situation, situation is minor Star Wars characters are very jealous. Boba Fett is getting so much more attention and content. Write a subtweet about Boba Fett from any minor character. So clearly talking about him without mentioning him by name. Oh, the subtweet. The lovely subtweet, which has definitely played into the views of sequel trilogies. <laughs> subtweets. Ah, All right. First up is James at Slow Focus. Hey, James. 
He said, at Red 2, apparently crashing into the side of a sail barge is a better path to success than blowing up two Death Stars. <laughs> That's a good subtweet. Oh, my gosh. Wedge Antilles with the spicy subtweet. Yeah. Next is Trick or Treat Villanueva. Oh, John, mm. he's got that Halloween. Uh, Rick. <laughs> Uh, at Cad, ba Cad Bane's Bounty. And Rick said, at Mebo Gascon. Real. Meber Gascon. Oh. Real warriors don't need armor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there was an episode of the Clone yes. Wars where he like hides in a droid. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things that when you see it written, you're like, what word is this? <laughs> All right. Next is Mark at the kind of vacans at duh underscore kind underscore awakens. And Mark said at Mace Windu. I don't know how he could li live himself. So I took care of that problem. <laughs> I think that was supposed to say live with himself. Oh, but Mark missed the word. I don't know how he could live with himself. So I took care of that problem. <laughs> oh, get it? <laughs> yeah. Killed his dad. Next is uh Ricky at Sith Master 097. Hey Ricky. He said at Aura Sing, I get thrown off a cliff, but do I get any do I get any attention? No. <laughs> that sad little Sleemo would be nothing without me. <laughs> Fair. Fair. She has Beckett that really cool everything. shot in Phantom Menace, and then nothing came of it. Um yeah. next is Joby One jedi joey at jedi joey hey joey he said up, joey? at several bothans nah it's cool guys we only died to help and an end an empire maybe we should have just been bumped into hit the side of the sail barge and then fell into a death pit maybe then we could oh i don't know just have our faces shown face with rolling eyes <laughs> so the rolling eyes emoji yeah. <laughs> poor bothans <laughs> Poor Bothans. Next is Joey Sack at Joey Sack. Hey, Joey. He said at Dengar Roth. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. I never knew that all I had to do is get my own show. To get my own show was to fall into a hole in the ground. Poor guy. Did so much work for eventually Poor looking. Poor Dang. <laughs> eventually looking terrible. I still can't get over how ugly that dude is. What did he ever yeah. do? All right. And last He's but not ugly. least is Cal, Cal B, at Luke's Green Saber. What up, Kyle? Kyle said, told this guy he was a sidekick and that he'd be talking through the window of a Bacta tank before I whooped his green booty. And this dude gets a show? Guy can't even sm smolder under a blanket as good as me. <laughs> At K Reeves, Casca Reeves. Oh, <laughs> I thought for a second I thought it was Keanu Reeves, and I was like, I don't understand what this joke is. I get it now. That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god, the drama that came out of that shot when it was in the trailer. People were like, "What does it mean?" Duh, she's a Sith. Oh she's my a Jedi. Goodness. It's Sabine. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your answers. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at RBATSWNN. And if you're feeling also extra wanting to follow, uh, <clears throat> at the Resistance Broadcast on Instagram, uh, and stay tuned for the next Resistance Transmissions. John? All right. Thank you to everybody for listening and watching, being a part of TRB. Um, real quick, I do have to give a shout out to some of our patrons which are our generals and our spice runners mm -hmm. so uh, i want to get to that now by saying a big thank you to carmelo andrew staley jeremy myers john reese jetta rosewater great job on monday in the pod race jetta fantastic jetta. work paul olson jake houchins oliver lewis frank grande has aslam joe ritchie Darth Hurricane, John Charlton, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Joey Mayfield, Stewart, Nathan Shank, and Val Trichkoff. And our Spice Runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C Chris, Kendall Gellner, Ryan Wara, Dave Hornack, Micah Harrison, Thomas Hennessy. Thank you all for all of your support and all of our patrons of TRB. Uh, it means the world, uh, like Lacey said at the top of the show. Thank you all very much. Uh, James, we miss you dearly. Uh, come back and we'll 
see you on monday buddy <laughs> uh but you guys can find james on twitter at myra trunks and instagram as well uh make sure you are subscribed to the show everywhere whether that's youtube or your preferred podcast platform two episodes free every week for you always will be and uh, also make sure you go to StarWarsNewsNet.com for all of your Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. You can find me writing and editing over there pretty much every day. You can also find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and uh, also my movie podcast, which has nothing to do with Star Wars. So if you want to hear me talk about other stuff, it's called Just Like the Movies. Me and my friend Mike talk every couple of weeks on uh, some of the movies we love from yesteryear. Uh, Lacey. People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin and also doing Lacey's Outposts and other things like our recent R2D2 unboxing from fanhound.com yeah. where you can see what that process is like over on the YouTube channel, which if you're watching right now, right here. Right here. <laughs> All right. Um, that is the end of the show. We hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. We hope you enjoyed our discussion. If you're on social media, uh, if you're listening to the show still at this point in the show, that means you're a big fan of ours. So we appreciate it if you're on social media. Quote tweet the episode, share it with a friend, retweet it, get it out there, more eyeballs on it, help us grow. You're, you spreading the word helps us grow. We've been seeing a lot of growth on Spotify uh, and uh, everywhere. So we appreciate everyone, uh, however you found us. Uh, spreading the word it means a great deal to us so thank you uh so have a great weekend everybody and we'll see you on monday morning with another episode right here on the resistance broadcast see you around kids